What's up Rangers? Welcome to this how-to video to install T3A in Daemon Tools. Go jump into it. I'm gonna be showing you specifically how to install T3A online. This is an awesome team of people who put together a server for Battle for Middle Earth 1, 2, and Rise of the Witch King. So with that being said, let's go and move on to T3A. All right, so we're on the T3A online website. The first couple of steps I'm gonna run through with you guys, and then I'm also gonna show you how to do it in the game. Most of you who are coming on the website will not have an actual Revora account. Revora is connected to T3A online because of their forums. So what you wanna do first is if you think you ever made an account, maybe your Google Chrome kept it and you can just fill it in, type it in and whatnot and hit log in. But under register, this is where you're gonna fill out the information, right? So you're gonna put in a username, an email, a password, and then confirm your current password. I do wanna say, if you guys feel generous, do donate to T3 Online because what they're doing does cost money, but they're doing it because they love the community. So I'm gonna go and fill out just to test to show you guys how this actually works. So we're gonna run it, jump in the username. I'm just gonna type in my username as Strider of Valor, of course, because I'm a streamer. So and I'm just gonna do six, five. And we're gonna jump in here and put my email. We all know my email and I'm gonna put a super secret password, all right? So none of you guys can know. So once you finish here, what you wanna do is hit register and you're gonna get an email to confirm the email that you're using. All right, so you're gonna see this here. You have an activation email sent. All right, so next what you guys are gonna jump into, we're gonna go to our email. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for an email that says activation account on T3A online.net. You'll see this link, you click that, it'll activate it. So we'll click it, I'll show you guys what it does. It'll open a new tab in your browser. Boom, it's now been activated. And now you can log in. Top right over and just hit log in. Now, we're gonna go and log in with my super secret username. All right, so next, after you're able to get logged in, you're gonna create a server login name and a server password. To make sure everyone understands this, not creating another way to log in on here on the website, you're creating a, an actual way for you to log in to the T3A online server in the game under when you hit multiplayer and then you choose online because where you have the server in the game, they call it username instead of a login name. So what we're gonna do for the login name, I'm gonna create it and make it the super secret. And then for the server password, I suggest making it more than 12 characters, just in case they do suggest that you, you know, keep it between four and 16. Once you're finished, I'm gonna hit create. And now you're done. You do have our profile as well, so you can jump in here. This will open up their forums page. On the Revora page, there's a ton of great information and ways to help you troubleshoot when you have issues. I will show you one right now. So for example, under Revora form, there's this one section he talks about fixing connection issues and port forwarding guides. On this page, if you have issues, follow his directions. It goes through very simple steps to help you fix if you have a network issue or if you're even not having a network issue, if you're having an issue with getting the online side to work. So one thing I do wanna point out right now is that it's very rare when this happens on your options any file, and I'll show you where that is right now. I'm in Windows 11, some of you are in Windows 10. You type in percent app data percent, this will open up your roaming folder. You'll go and navigate down to the Rise of the Witch King section down here, or whatever version of the Lord of the Rings beef me you're using. So we're gonna jump in here. We have a ton of great information, right? Primarily gonna be focusing on is this options any file. Now my option file is very simple. It, I don't, I have not added extra text of these firewall in the option any because I didn't have to, but some of you may have to if there's issues. The basic information when you're doing installations of this game, you're setting the resolution in your option any file for the game to actually launch. If there's any type of game spy address or any of these, those need to be removed. And then you set the file to read access only. The way you do that is you right click the file. In Windows 11, you'll have to go to show more options, but on Windows 10, you'll see properties at the bottom. So you go in this window, and what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna hit read only. So what happens is when you actually start the game, when the game runs and references this information in this roaming folder, it can't change any of the information. So we're gonna go and hit okay on that. When you're downloading T3, specific on how you download it, I would suggest how I got it to work, open up Microsoft Edge. When you do that, hit download. On the top right, you'll get this prompt saying it can't be downloaded securely. So you're gonna hit that three dots and you're gonna hit keep, and then you hit keep anyway. And then you can choose open or save as, or save. I'll just do save because it'll go straight to my downloads folder and boom, you now have T3A. So after you've installed T3A, presuming you've already installed Rise of the Witch King, what you wanna do is you'll go to the shortcut on your desktop. I'm, I'm just gonna right click it here. Shift, right click 
and you're going to want to say run as admin. Once you do that, hit the under the user access control prompt, hit yes, because you want to give it access. You're going to hit this hook tab at the top, and you can go down to outro TWK. Long story short, you can hook multiple types. What it does is it hooks to that executable inside of your program files. So when it runs, this runs right after and then it hooks so the network information goes forward. When you actually launch games, you'll hit whatever version of Beef Me you're playing. For example, Battles of Third Age, we're gonna play playing Rise of the Witch King. That's what ROTWK stands for. So you just hit that and it'll launch the game. But what you want to do to launch it, because we just closed it from opening straight from the shortcut, you'll go to the mod. So for example, I'll drag this here in the middle. You'll have your mod, whatever you're playing. Age of the Ring, of course, is over here. Great mod. You're just going to want to do shift, right click with Bada 4.2. Now, I already have it set to launch as admin. So for those on Windows 11, you can right click and go to show more on Windows 10. You won't have to. So in properties, you're going to go here. Under the compatibility settings, you're gonna run over to run this program in compatibility mode. I run it in Windows 7, just in case this game was made to run in that. And you'll check run this program as admin so you won't have to worry about it and you'll be good. You're just gonna to wanna to hit okay. And then of course, um, right click it and run as admin anyway, even though you already did. And once you do that, you wanna hit ROGWK and boom, your game will start. Now let's go and move over to the next session. So we're going to jump now into Daemon tools. I have a Google Drive link in the description. So when you guys hit that link and you'll be able to see a DT Lite installer EXE. Specifically for this, we're going to right click and you're going to hit download. When it downloads, you're going to install it. So you guys, after installation, make sure you don't install any extra stuff you don't need with it. So specifically, when you do open Daemon Tools, this is not the newest version. This is um, version 11. I used to do version 10, but I updated it to see if it would work a bit better. I've noticed that version 11 is actually very, very um, consistently working now. What you want to do is when you have Daemon Tools open, you're going to hit this disk and drive kind of picture here, and you're going to hit add drive. So when you add drive, we're adding a virtual drive. Hit the drop down, choose SCSI. So when you hit SCSI, what it's doing and telling the computer is I want to mount a virtual drive that can read a CD-ROM for a game, for example. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit add drive. Now, I don't have the prompt, but you all will, to download an SBDF to your computer. What that is, it's an actual driver itself to be added to your device manager. Now, it's gonna ask you once installed to restart your computer. So go ahead and do that and then come back after that. After we do that, now we can actually go through that same process again, adding it. And once you've added that drive down here, it's gonna be empty. So you're gonna to wanna to click on it and where you've saved your mini images, for example, for Rise of the Witch King, we're gonna choose the smallest file. This is five kilobytes, so it's MDS. So we're gonna go ahead and hit open. It's gonna mount it and boom. Now, when we actually open our file explorer, I'll show you guys real quick, you guys will see in your file explorer, if you go down to this PC, you actually see, whoa, and it's pretty cool. It's like I have actual CD in my computer, even though I don't, because most computers don't have drives anyway for CDs or DVDs. Since I've already launched, bought it, we're just gonna go through it one more time. I'm gonna do my shift, right click, and run as admin here. And once we do that, we're gonna hit yes. Now, if it doesn't, that means you haven't hooked it. So go back to that same T3A shortcut, open it as an admin, and make sure you hit that hook at the top and ROTWK. Next thing I do wanna mention before we go online, you wanna actually hit that hook again and you can actually unmount it and remove T3A from it if you guys want to use a different service. So make sure you do that, otherwise this will always be in use. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm going to hit ROTWK, so let's go and click on it here. Now the game should launch normally, so we're gonna hit online, we're gonna jump over to where, I'm gonna show you guys how to log in. To log in, you're gonna to want to go up to your EA account name, type in that server login, remember it was the second username you made, and then type in your password. When you type in that password, make sure it's as correct as it can be and maybe type it a second time because there is no I so you can see your password. Once you're done, go over to nickname. This is something you create right now. This is not something you had to already know. So go and create one. Now I will tell you, if you hit login and it errors out, it's not intuitive to say there's not enough nicknames available or you need a different nickname. It'll just say sign in failed. So change your nickname, add a number, add something, and then you're gonna hit login. And for me, I've already gone through it, but in the next prompt, when everything successfully goes in, choose your region. They do this to make sure you have the best connection. So uh, of course I'm in the US, so I'm gonna choose the United States or America. This next piece is really important. I wanna show you guys how the lobby room works. So we're gonna jump over here. You have multiple lobbies. So if you're not in that lobby or have that lobby active in the top bar, you won't see anyone under players 
or under game name that you want. Specifically, for example, when we're playing in my streams, we'll most likely be doing 5 plus. After this install, no one would have those issues. What you're gonna do when you join a game, go to game name and you name it whatever you want. Usually you just let it be your username. For the game password, it's whatever you want. I'm gonna create a really easy, simple password. I'm gonna go and hit create. After I hit create, it actually launches and gets us into the actual lobby room where we can actually create the game and get it set up. And this is what we've seen on stream. We all know how to do this. After this step, you're in. Now you'll notice that I have a red bar on mine. We're gonna go into connections down here. This is something that I noticed that's not always true. So in my last live streams, we've seen um, people try to come in or in some games I play with my brothers where we have bad connections. When it, under the legend, it has the indicators of like what type of connection status they have. I will say that if you have a poor connection, it's very likely that it really won't matter because it shifts. Now, if someone has better internet, like I have fiber, I will most likely be the one who wants to host just because I've got my internet a little more stable and it's a good center point for everybody. Now, there's something important specifically under your settings about us. So these are the settings that Margaret and I use. Thank you Rangers for watching this video so you guys get to learn how to install T3A along with Daemon tools. First things first, I just wanna say I'm looking forward to playing with all that are available who want to join us on Wednesdays we'll get it we'll get a system up in place so we can get everybody a fair shot to play with us because of course we can only go up to what like I think it was like six or so people um so we can only do so many people at once but again it's going to be super fun to have our community involved and just have a great time on this mod especially when the new version releases so back to the fun fact section I want you guys to be aware of you'll see the installation guide of course like I talked about you'll see the BFME startup fixer that's a quick easy fix if there's any issues with your game not starting in general and then if you could not connect error like you can't connect to a server there's something going on again make sure your T3s launch as an administrator by right clicking on the T3A shortcut then properties then compatibility then run the program as admin if that doesn't work open up the options any and add the line in the description you'll see it has the has got online yes i won't read it all and then also delete the line if you see it um the game's by ip address but again like i said um, a little bit ago please set that file to read access so that stuff doesn't happen um so then you guys don't you know guys don't have those type of issues thank you guys for watching this video please put in the comments what you thought of the video